The last reaction in glycolysis is mediated by the enzyme pyruvate kinase, which converts a, the compound phosphoenol pyruvate, which we made in the enolase step, that's this fella here, converts him to pyruvate and makes an ATP. So again, this is a good example of substrate level phosphorylation. You can see the reason that this works. Uh, phosphoenol pyruvate, the whole reaction coupled, actually has a negative 31 kilojoule per mole free energy. So this is a flux control step uh, out of glycolysis, and uh, it is enough to make an ATP plus almost another whole ATP. Now in real life, this uh, runs at 17. Actually, I'm going to correct that. There's not delta G naught. It's just regular delta G. Um, Regular delta G actually runs at negative 17 kilojoules per mole, so not quite enough to make two. Plus, there's only one phosphate to move on to an ATP. So, that, you know, it would be great if this could make two, but it can only make one due to realistic constraints. Only one phosphate is actually available to be transferred. Now, if you look at the active site, we have our ADP. You have our magnesium cofactor, like all kinases. We have another magnesium cofactor here that's organized to a water molecule. Now, that's kind of important uh, as we get to the reaction. So, for all kinases that are named like this, right, pyruvate kinase, it's named for the reverse reaction like this, right? Same enzyme, it's just running in reverse here because the free energy in this direction is so much more favorable. But the name of this, again, comes from a historical remnant of how this enzyme was discovered. It was first discovered pyruvate plus ATP goes to this. And you can imagine some of the early work uh, in biochemistry was just, we have a thing, throw ATP in it and see what happens with this enzyme. And look, it happens, so it's a pyruvate kinase. Uh, and then they later figured out that it actually runs the opposite direction. So there's some confusion about the name, but it's not a terrible amount of confusion. Okay. So first thing we're going to do here is, anytime a kinase runs in reverse, the ADP is the nucleophile, and it's going to attack our phosphorus, kick up our charge onto phosphorus, or onto oxygen, to give us a trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. And here's the trigonal bipyramid. Now, I've actually shown a drop of the hydrogen here, and so I'm going to leave that on. Sorry about that. Quick, quick correction. I, I lost a hydrogen. Um, and, of course, what are we going to do? Well, once we have this, then we want to reform our P double bondo, and we're going to kick off our group. Now, this bond actually kind of goes over to pick up this hydrogen, and so we're going to have a nice uh, enol formed at the next step. So just to kind of clarify this, the bond really does go back to the oxygen, but we're going to pick up the hydrogen that we forgot uh, when I made this. Okay. So now we have enol pyruvate. Enol pyruvate. En enol, which is the double bond, C double bond C with an OH on it. Uh, and it's pyruvate because all it needs to do is tautomerize to become regular old pyruvate. Okay. So... All we need to do to finish this reaction is to complete the mechanism. Now, ATP is all done. ATP can just float away and be released if we could. Um, but enol pyruvate still has another step where we're going to do our tautomerization, our enol to ketone tautomerization. That's what's going to happen here. Well, the sequence for this is is a little bit complicated. In fact, ADP can actually do a little bit of this. Um, but I'm going to show it like this. Our bond is going to come down here, but it has to be pulled. You can't just have a bond move and hydrogen is left in the lurch. And so our water can do a pull here. And then our double bond formation is going to push electrons off of the double bond C. And it's going to give us kind of this roundabout. So hydrogen is going to get plucked off. It's going to go down here. Our double That's going to push our electrons off onto the end here, a carbanion intermediate. I'm not showing the carbanion intermediate, but you can imagine that it's there. Um, and then we're going to deprotonate this organized water in the active site, and we'll reprotonate with this hydrogen here. So that makes this a nice little roundabout. It's going to give us our recharged water, and it's going to give us our pyruvate. And that looks like... So that pyruvate is going to move on to the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, 
before it enters into the Krebs cycle. And that pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is going to lose this C double bondo and leave behind acetyl CoA. And it's also going to help us generate a little bit of energy we're going to need in our metabolism.